Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Dr. Michelle Chartier and I'm a dentist in Atlanta, Georgia. I actually graduated from University of Sats. <laughs> Where did I go? <laughs> uh, University of Southern California, so USC, which gets confused because we are in the South and everybody thinks I'm talking about South Carolina. Needless to say, we're going to talk today about dentistry. Specifically, if you're interested in dentistry, this video will work for you. Uh, if you're interested, please subscribe to my channel, which is down below. Let's get right into this. So a lot of my colleagues uh, graduated in the 90s, and things have changed so much since that time. There's a lot of different requirements. There's a lot of financial considerations to be made about this uh, wonderful vocation. So I just wanted to share my insight and some of the advice that I've given to some of the interns and the young men and women who have come and observed in my office. Let's get right into it. Is dentistry worth it? Is it worth going into this profession? So I did some research and um, having been in practice for 25 years, I have some insight on this because here I am. Uh, I would say to anybody who's interested in anything that they want to pursue, the investment is always worth it, but it has to be near and dear to your heart. So let's start with the assumption that you really love the idea of becoming a dentist. It's not a dream of your family or what have you. Needless to say, the amount of time, energy, and money that you're going to be putting into this profession is overwhelming. So let's really talk about those numbers. What are those numbers? I went ahead and did some research and I used a particular website which um, it was called studentdebtrelief.us and these are 2019 numbers. So the tuition costs for residents in 2019 on average was $251,233. Non-residents, it's $321,575. That is for four years of school. The um, public schools are actually much cheaper and on average you will save $128,000, $380 to stay in state. So that might be a consideration as you're doing your application process. In the last 10 years, there has been over a 100% increase in tuition. And you're wondering like, why is this so expensive? Well, the tuition costs are exorbitant, but also you're gonna be purchasing, obviously study materials or learning materials, but also instruments. And you're also probably going to have to help pay for some of the treatments that you're rendering in the clinic. Uh, some of your patients will not be able to afford the cost of the care that you need to do that's required for you to graduate. So um, these are all considerations and this does not come into um, consideration with things like rent, food, board, etc. So this is just tuition assistance. So let's talk about what schools cost what, which are our cheapest and what's our most expensive. And I'm relating this based on residents in state. So our cheapest school that, to, that we know of is University of Puerto Rico. Uh, Texas A&M comes in second. University of Alabama is third. East Carolina University. And then last but not least, number five is Augusta, which makes all of my uh, interns very happy because if they stay in state and go to Augusta, they will be at one of the cheaper dental schools. The most expensive for residents, which... Um, was very interesting to me because I've not heard of this school. Midwestern in Illinois is the most expensive, uh, 396,958. Now, not so far behind that is my alma mater, University of Southern California, at $396,606. So really only $300 difference, uh, not a big difference. Uh, number three is Midwestern in Arizona. Again, not a school I'm familiar with, but 386407 so we're talking about $10,000 difference. 
Number four is University of the Pacific, which is in Northern California. The interesting thing about that program, it's only a three-year program, but it ranks as one of the most expensive at number four at $381,000. And number five is University of Pennsylvania, and that is $379,737. One of the things that is not mentioned when you talk about uh, how expensive it is to become a dentist, nobody really mentions the lost income during the four years of graduate schooling. So they call that an opportunity cost. So someone who graduate with a BS in chemistry averages $63,818. That means after four years of receiving that income, which would be the same time you would be in dental school, you are missing an opportunity for $255,272. Again, $255,272 of missed income or opportunity costs. So you have to figure in, not only are you paying over 200,000, you're now also missing out on potential income. And we only live so long and can work so long, so you have to consider that in the grand scheme of things. Pay scale says that on average, a dentist first out of school makes between 70,000 to $117,000. That uh, obviously is a range, and this is based on a thousand uh, applicants that they polled. It doesn't mean you're going to make seventy thousand dollars. It doesn't mean you're going to make only a hundred and ten thousand. This is just averages. So when you look at how am I going to be able to service my loan debt and what is my loan debt over the average span of that loan, let's look at that a little more closely. So if you have two hundred and eighty-five thousand dollars in loan debt paid over ten years at 7% interest, that becomes $393,759. Why is that? Because over the 10 years, you're gonna pay $113,575 in interest. These are big numbers, and it's kind of overwhelming, I would think, um, but if you are creative, there's ways to make this more attainable. One thing I would suggest is obviously try to go in state if you can, because of course you're gonna have lower tuition rates. Another thing that's beneficial is that you might be able to live at home with your parents, so you're not paying for rent. You can decrease your living costs, which is awesome. Another thing is you might be able to get some scholarship money based on being in that area or finding a rotary club that wants to support you. I mean, there's much more, many, many options there. What I will tell you is what I did, and I suggest to everybody, if you don't wanna be paying so much in your interest over the 10 years, is pay it back as early as you can. There is no uh, penalty for early payback. So you're going to be making more money than you ever have in your life, and you're, it's going to feel like a lot of money or income. What I will tell you is before you buy your new car or you know the great new house, go ahead and take care of these loans, and then you can move forward from there. I will tell you, if you do love dentistry, it's absolutely worth it. So think about the numbers, try to make them work, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Appreciate you.